Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of Hot News. Hope you're doing well on this Wednesday morning, afternoon, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about the fact that we're live over on Twitch right now is the, the time you're filming this, so come check us out, twitch.tv forward slash Disciple. And let's go ahead and talk about today's video sponsor. Our friends, today's video is sponsored by GlassesUSA.com. You should check them out for all of your glasses needs, whether it be sunglasses, prescription glasses, nearsighted, farsighted, anything in between. They have it and they make your online shopping experience easy and as convenient as possible. You can provide your prescription by filling it out online uploading or email or you can complete your order and provide your prescription later or if you don't have your prescription you can use their prescription scanner app by downloading it on your phone and using your phone's camera to scan your current eyeglasses and get all the details of your prescription it's FDA listed easy to use and it's ready with accurate results in just 10 to 15 minutes and after that you just choose your lenses you choose whether or not you have near vision single vision progressive bifocal whatever and then you can customize any of your lenses with a multitude of different things such as anti scratch UV protection and blue light blocking or mirrored and polarized for sunglasses as well as blue light blocking on non-prescription glasses. So you just place your order and that's it, you're done. The glasses enter production and will arrive straight to your doorstep, standard shipping's free. And if for any reason you don't like it, you're not totally happy with your order, you have 14 days to return for a refund, product exchange or 100% store credit, no questions asked and hassle free. And in case that's not enough, you wanna see how the glasses look on you before you order them, well you go ahead and use their virtual try on tool on their website by either uploading a picture of yourself or using a live webcam feed and then it will put the glasses on you and you can see exactly what you're gonna look like and see whether or not you're as dapper as I am. So check them out at the link in the video description, glassesusa.com and you can sign up for 65% off your first pair by using our link down below. Big thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Check them out. Now, that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the RTX 30 series because we did a video yesterday right after the launch, but there's a bunch of stuff that's kind of been revealed more as time has gone on. A few things that we kind of missed as the announcement happened and a few things that we didn't. So let's just go over the RTX 30 series for those who want the low breakdown. There were three cards announced yesterday. The RTX 3090 coming in at $1,500 with a bunch of specs, 10,500 CUDA cores, 1.7 gigahertz boost clock, 24 gigabytes of GDDR6 X VRAM, as well as a bunch of other stuff like a 350 watt TDP and a 12 pin power connector, as well as a three slot setup. You've got the RTX 3080, which is gonna be the main flagship that's supposed to be there, starting at $700 with 8,704 CUDA cores, 10 gigabytes of GDDR6 X VRAM and a 320 watt TGP. Then the RTX 3070, which is at $500, and has 5,888 CUDA cores, as well as having a power of 220 watts. So a couple of the things that I wanna mention that kinda of have been floating around there. Number one, all three of the Founders Edition cards have the 12 pin power connector. You can see that here on the RTX 3070. It's right there. It's kinda of in a really weird place. That is such a hideous design there. It's also really bad on the RTX 3080 because it's at like a really weird angle. I'll show you more of that in a second. But all three Founders Edition RTX 30 series cards have the new 12 pin power connector, which likely will ship as an adapter in these cards. I have not seen a single partner card that has required the 12 pin. So it only seems like you need it for the Founders Edition and that all of the partners are either going with dual or triple eight pins. You're not gonna need it. But every card 3070, 3080, and 3090 from NVIDIA directly requires 12 pin. Then number two, the thing that has been missed is that the CUDA core amounts on these cards are insane. 8,704 on the 3080, 10,500 on the 3090, 8,700 on the 3080, and 5,888 on the 3070. If you're following along at home, the 2080 Ti only has 4,352 CUDA cores. So the 3070 is just slamming it out of the water, but Nvidia made it seem like, especially Jensen in his keynote, made it seem like the 3070 is on par with the 2080, just a little bit faster. So if it has 1,500 more CUDA cores, how is it just a little bit faster? Well, that's because of how Nvidia is gonna be counting CUDA cores in their ampere generation. So essentially it has to do with some revisions that they've did with how it operates on the FP32 operations per SM. So essentially it's slightly doubling everything. It looks like we're getting about a 20% IPC boost out of these CUDA cores. 
that's essentially what's happening. But just because it has 5,888 CUDA cores, that is not equivalent to having 5,888 CUDA cores on Turing. These are different uh, a way of measuring the CUDA cores and the 8,700 on the 3080 and the 10,500. This is a different way of measuring it. It's not exactly the same. So it's just, you gotta take that with a grain of salt. It doesn't mean that it's gonna be double the performance because it has over double the amount of CUDA cores. So those are the two big things that kind of were missed or not talked about. 12 pin on all Founders Edition cards, and, but not partner cards. CUDA cores being a weird setup now. We're going to go over the next two in a little bit, but let's go ahead and talk about the custom models for a second because uh, we have a whole bunch of them that got revealed yesterday. You've got the Asus models. That's the Strix. That's the Tough Gaming. They have a few different iterations. They have it 3090, 3080, and 3070 versions of these cards. You've got the Aorus cards as well. I think all of these look good so far it looks like this may have an oled display right here to display the temperatures which oris is doing pretty nice there msi also coming in good with the gaming x trio as well as the ventus which yes this is a ventus not a duke so this is looking really good uh msi asus and gigabyte all seem to have the the money on the nose evga what is wrong with you guys so the kingpin looks good this one is okay but it's still it has that like red line going on here then you have the hybrid model which has the red line there and then you see in the four to win three edition they just decided that they wanted to implement red that is red paint right there there's red paint on the other side of the gpu their geforce rtx logo is red and there's a red line going on the back i don't know why they decided to do that here is the normal version that you should probably pick up from evga I just don't know what's going on here. You can see there's red here, there's red on this side, there's RGB implemented, but this is just a, it's a funky design on the For The Win 3, and I'm not sure if I'm a fan of it. You let me know what you think of it down below in the comments. Then we've got Zotac, looks pretty okay. These have more of an angular design. Zotac's APAC cards as well, which, ooh, that one's a pretty one. That's a pretty one right there. I totally take that one. Check out that, oh my gosh, this is real, it has the, fans on the back why would they do that that looks hideous with the ketchup and mustard cables what are you doing kind of want it you know 3d with their eye chill models and then lastly just 3080s and 3070s of basically all of the same designs going all the way down so those are the partner models there's a few other things that nvidia talked about with their announcement yesterday you've got things such as nvidia reflex you could reduce the input latency on your games by connecting a mouse directly to your monitor and thereby it allows you to actually get better input latency uh they announced that this is going to be working on g-sync esports displays they announced NVIDIA Broadcast, which has microphone ca noise cancellation. It has a built-in green screen, as well as a camera tracker. They have NVIDIA Omniverse Machinima, which you can make uh, video game storytelling with that. They talked about the new ray tracing implementations, how that it is 2.7 times faster in shader performance, 1.7 times faster in ray tracing performance, 2.7 times faster in tensor performance, as well as the new architecture. This is all just the big stuff. The performance per watt is nearly double over Turing. They also showed off marbles as well as a bunch of other stuff. RTX IO, probably one of the biggest things, supporting Microsoft Direct Storage for Windows, which got officially unveiled yesterday. This is how PCs are gonna actually be able to compete with the new decompression technology that's coming out on the next-gen consoles. PS5 actually coming through with 10 gigabytes per second of throughput. It looks like RTX IO is gonna be allowing for you to be able to do 14 gigabytes per second while using half a GPU core, or half a CPU core, rather. So that's gonna be interesting. So that coincides with the fact that Microsoft announced direct storage is officially coming out to PC. But the big thing that we want to talk about is performance, and that is where Digital Foundry came out with a video showing the first early look of the 3080. They actually had the card, and this is where I just want to pause here. That is hideous. That, like, angle right there for that... That 3080 connector, I hate that. Anyways, they were able to actually test this 3080. And one of the big things is Jensen said that this card would light up, and it does indeed. You can see... Right there, it has a white LED that illuminates the GeForce RTX, which if we're going to get an LED, I'm glad it's not green. I'm glad they went with just like a regular white LED. So good job, Jensen. 
it does light up and there we have it. So that's that's nice. So one of the things to note is that Digital Foundry is currently running this on a Maximus board, which means it's an Intel platform, which means it's PCI Express 3.0. And I'm not gonna spoil their entire video. We'll leave a link in the video description as well as a link in the top right hand corner over there for you to go check it out. But suffice it to say, the 3080 performs between 70 and 80% better than a 2080 in non ray tracing scenarios. Just regular gameplay, you're getting about 70% better performance for the exact same price. 699 is the price that the 3080 is coming in at, and it can do uh, almost double what the 2080 could, even though that released two years ago. Uh, they did show in certain ray trace scenarios that this actually performs about 90% better. So it's intriguing. They didn't show raw FPS. They were only able to show comparative numbers, but the 3080 does appear to be really gosh dang fast. But I do just want to talk about the difference of the cards just quickly. So while NVIDIA has said that the 3070 should be faster than the 2080 Ti, we have to take that with a grain of salt because it's only going to be in scenarios where you actually don't need the extra VRAM that's coming in. The 3070 has eight gigabytes of VRAM, whereas the 2080 Ti has 11. And with textures coming in and increasing in size, you actually might run into a bottleneck with that eight gigabytes. However, I will say that probably one of the biggest things that Nvidia has to their advantage is their DLSS technology, which is going to allow you to run at 4K with higher textures, but it's gonna be upscaled by the AI and you actually don't need to necessarily load all of that on the VRAM. You can load in 720 or 1080p textures, which eight gigabytes is gonna to be totally fine for, and then that's gonna get AI up res to 4K or whatever resolution you're playing on. So the 3070, if, if Nvidia's statements are true, can be faster than the 2080 Ti, but you do have to watch how that's gonna happen with the VRAM scenario. Obviously, don't necessarily pre-order this until reviews come out. However, we're waiting. August 17th is the pre-order date for the 3080, so, I'm expecting that NVIDIA will allow reviews to either go out on September 17th as pre-orders go live, or hopefully at least a day beforehand, which is possible. So make sure you get the reviews from reviewers first before you go all in on this money. But we have some good indication, NVIDIA showing that it's gonna perform decently, but then Digital Foundry coming out with a third-party testing, and it looks, it looks like it's doing what NVIDIA has said. 70% performance increase is nothing to sneeze at. They also showed off the Cyberpunk 2077 trailer with ray tracing and DLSS turned on. I have to say, this looks gorgeous. I can't imagine what this is gonna look like on a 3090 when I actually have it. I am highly anticipating Cyberpunk. The, the gameplay that they're showing here makes me incredibly excited for this game. On top of that, you might be excited for ray tracing and DLSS to come out to Fortnite because that's happening. So we'll get re reflections and ray tracing in that. Cool, don't really care all of that much, as well as 360 hertz monitors getting announced that support NVIDIA's reflex latency analyzer, which allows you to make sure that you're not getting as much input latency when you're playing video games. The Acer 360 hertz Predator X25, as well as the Alienware one that has 360 hertz, as well as the Asus one, and then they also are apparently rolling, Alienware is apparently rolling out laptops with 360 hertz refresh rates, which are only gonna have I mean, it says RTX GPUs. Is it gonna be the RTX 20 series or 30 series? I'm not sure how you're gonna hit 360 hertz on a laptop, but good luck to you if you're gonna to try to do that. And just the last little bit about Nvidia's stuff, FSP rolling out their Ampere cable, which just is essentially a dual eight pin to a 12 pin for the cards that are coming out. And then this is the big thing that I wanted. The big announcement yesterday that got me the most excited, Nagao announcing graphics card mirrors. Yes, my friends, you put a mirror down below at the bottom of your case and it reflects the pretty fans that the graphics card manufacturers work so very hard to make look beautiful. And now you can actually see it because it's gonna tilt it up at you and you're gonna be able to look at it. This solves all the problems. You can't look at a GPU you put a GPU in like this, but you're missing all the goodness that they so clearly designed, but then you wanna vertical mount it, right? And when you vertical mount it, you're missing all the backplate, which that got designed too. So now you can slot it in, you get the bot, you get the backplate, you get the side profile, and now with the mirror, you're gonna be able to get the bottom profile as well. There's no release date or pricing announced for this mirror. Just go build your own, I suppose, in case you really need it right now. I'm gonna hold out for it. Let's talk about some other technology, not the RTX 30 series that got announced yesterday. So Brent announcing their next generation Rocket 4 Plus PCI Express SSDs. They're gonna have the new Fizon controller, which allows them to do seven gigabytes per second read and nearly seven gigabytes per second write. 
They're going to be available in 500, one terabyte and two terabyte capacities. Holy crap, Sabrent, take my money. No pricing or date announced with those yet. And no pricing or date announced with the OnePlus Watch, but there's some information coming out from a regulatory website, which seems like the OnePlus Watch stream might not be dead. It could potentially be coming out. There's also a leak schematic for the upcoming iPad, which shows USB-C as well as Face ID. Additionally, the LG Wing has gotten a price for it, which is the rotatable phone, which is just an odd design. Apparently, it's going to cost $1,000 launching later this fall. I kind of want to try it. I, I'm kind of I'm kind of nearly wanted it, wanting it. I'm not sure. Let me know what you think of the LG Wing down below. But the Z Fold 2 got officially unveiled by Samsung yesterday, just before the NVIDIA conference. And it's going to go on sale for $2,000, which is $20 more than the original. It's going to have a 6.2 inch AMOLED display. It's going to have 120 hertz refresh rate. It's got a whole bunch of the good stuff that you would want from a Samsung flagship. It looks pretty decent. Uh, it looks like they made all the improvements that they needed to from the first generation. I don't know. I'm not spending $2,000 on it. And the Surface Duo looks to be more appealing to me as a foldable device than one like this, which has three screens and can be a tablet and has two selfie cameras, but they also made it so that you can use the rear camera to take a selfie. So then why did you include the selfie camera? What are you doing? But on top of that, Xiaomi showed off their under display camera, which they're saying will ship next year, which allows you to actually take pictures without having the hole punch right there. You see right here, taking a picture with no camera being shown off it's an interesting bit of technology. We'll see if this catches on. And then finally, with phone stuff, the Pixel 5 and 4a 5G have passed through FCC for certification. So hopefully we get some information on that sometime soon, probably in the October time frame. But next year is the time frame that you should be looking out for drones in the sky because Amazon's Prime Air is now an air carrier, according to the FAA, finally being granted that by the Federal Aviation Administration, which will allow them to start doing trial runs of drone delivery some sometime next year they've already tested in the uk but now it's coming to the us so watch out okay watch make sure they don't like get in your hair and rip it out it'd be bad what's not bad is twitch's September, which is currently going on they have their September promotion which allows you to get discounts on channel subscriptions currently you can get 20 percent off of one month 25 percent off of three months or 30 percent off of six months if you do a subscription over on twitch it actually helps a lot when you do that to people over on twitch you subscribe to them so in case you want to check us out because we could should currently be live twitch.tv forward slash uf disciple i actually use this to get a six month sub to kit boga in case you don't know kit boga he scams scammers it's a great Twitch channel to watch. So anyways, we'll leave a link to our Twitch down below and you can potentially participate in September. I'm going to participate in ending this episode of Hot News and talking about our video sponsor again. Big thanks again to Glasses USA for sponsoring today's video. Check them out. The link in the video description to save up to 65% off your first pair. Do it, my friends. And that's it. That's the end of Hot News 30 series. Exciting stuff. It was a lot. We went through it. You and I together, we're done with it. I love y'all and I will see you in the next one. Bye.